Architects fees crash. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to a new episode of Heiser Says. Working through my Stein of coffee, I thought we would have a look at this article entitled Time to Get Out, Architects Pay Hit by Slump. I'd take a slightly different take on it, more say architects fees as professionals have just been slammed, have just been slammed. Now, before we go through this article, and thank you for everyone who shared it with me in the comments or sent it to me, I appreciate it, because I wouldn't have seen it otherwise. I thought I'll just talk about some of the different projects we've worked on. For those of you that don't know, my wife and I, we are both architects, we have our own architectural practice, and we've been doing it for several years, called Heiser Architecture. I'm not very creative in, the, in how I name things. But, you know, here I've just brought up our Facebook and some different types of projects. And I'll just have a look at them and have a bit of a talk to them just to give you a bit of, you know, an insight into the experience we had. Because Rachel and I, we both worked for, we studied at Queensland University of Technology. And in that course, it's a flexible full-time one when we did it. It meant we were one day at uni and four days working in practice. So our social life was pretty much just dating other architects and hanging out with other architects. But you could earn money and you could start your career, which was, it was really good. It was really, really good. I mean, that day at uni was long. It was 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. It was a long day. But four days a week was enough for you to take on responsibility in an office. And it was really good. So we'll have a look. You know, here's, uh, here we go. Here's one we did at 133 Mary. This is just some renders. I haven't gotten the, the pictures up on my Instagram, Facebook. This was a, just a ground floor refurbishment. And you can see here, this actually is an aluminium cladding, composite cladding. That's the, the stuff that is having issues everywhere. And we had made sure, you know, the certifier made sure that we'd put on a fire rated cladding here because running out into this courtyard space, that cladding is, could potentially catch on fire and then inhibit people's ability to escape. And, uh, you know, got some nice pressed metal there and it was just challenging working with an existing building, particularly where they were, um, where they were, you know, we had to scan for all of the existing steel and Rio and get into there. And the council just wanted us to put so many plants on there. But, you know, that was quite a, a nice job, just a, a recent project we'd worked on. This was a, a little one we did down in Melbourne, a little, you know, cafe restaurant type of, um, you know, fit out. See how the finishes here, we've got some really nice wallpaper. You can get some cool things with wallpaper and some, some lighting design. The, the powder coated ducting, that looks, looks really schmick, I like that. You know, we did a lot of Lorna Janes, a lot of Lorna Janes. Rachel really handled those fit outs there. And this is one in Melbourne now, and this one's gone. You know, nice little fit out. Um, and here's another one. You know, she did a few of them. They're, they're colorful, they look nice, and they look interesting. So we've done, you know, some commercial work and a lot of retail and fit out work. Um, I've got a few up here. <laughs> I really flooded it with Instagram. This is some remote housing. We did some proposals because uh, we did a lot of modular type of work volumetric modular remote location from the mining and this is a proposal for some remote Queensland health housing we did there and this this is some of the mining work we did and here's that you can see a picture of me standing next to one of the tires there on the mine uh, Dornier and Cavill Ridge and these are coal mines up in Queensland and these are all prefabricated modular buildings that were built down here and trucked up and you know it's all to do with low maintenance and just getting everything to fit inside there they were interesting jobs 20 million a pop roundabout little you know atm pod oh, this this is an idea this is a concept competition entry for how to flood proof queenslanders instead of like lifting up the whole house just building a, a flood proof space above so you could you know escape up to there um, little health jobs you know some uh, birthing center uh now that i think back about it oh this one was interesting this was a concept we did we were asked by mx to to do an architectural concept and so we propose to replace all of the city cycle parking, you know, with smart car parking because smart car is better for the environment or efficient. And th this is my car here. And we, we just photoshopped it all in the one place <laughs> and I got hate mail. I got hate mail from uh, bike riders from bike riders. It's funny. Oh, here we go. This is a, just an installation we did. And this is our first actual commercial client was just the work cover, little fit outs and that stuff. And then some more conceptual stuff, you know, some bike um, parking, some house extensions there, you know, 
This is nice. Beautiful extension there. Friend has a house in inner city Brisbane, but he's right between at the edge of a park. All the houses were gone and uh, nice big windows to really bring the green space into it. So that was, that was a beautiful one, actually. He built it himself. He was a, a more, you know, conceptual um, concept for, you know, funky, funky house. And here you go, you know, some mine and stuff. So we've, we've worked on a variety of different, oh yeah, and then we, hang on, this one was just the hoarding design there. It's interesting, the, the business that did that hoarding, he's hoarding, he's, it's a patented system, I think it's Eagle Rock, and uh, he's making more money just using the, the patented hoarding system than uh, in other, other parts of his game, so good on him, it's, it's impressive, you know, so, you know, apartments, these type of things. You know, more uh, commercial like refurbishment so we've we've worked in a whole series of different stuff just interesting actually going through with, through these photographs and these concepts and things and networking others is indigenous housing so i remember this this was a proposal to reuse parts of the the washed away brisbane um walkway to cut up the steel and make an installation there as a barrier uh, didn't get very far some modular student accommodation and this was a um, toilet we're putting inside for a and end a trip facility in a commercial building there just having to cut it up and get into there it's you know multi-story house extensions so yeah variety of different stuff little gymnasium and just some progress images you know how you have to do showing people working on site so yeah we've worked in a lot of different projects and, you know I'd say we're more commercially focused you know we've got some modular experience not really the luxury high-end residential I don't really trace chase that sector I don't have any relationships to be honest in that sector uh, it's more the commercial problem-solving and we work with a variety of people under design and construct and traditional procurement so when people are sharing you know these type of articles that architects pay hit by slump i am not surprised at all we started our own practice um, i finished university and remember rachel and i were working all through university four days a week so we came out with a fair bit of experience to become an architect you need to go do two years of postgraduate experience and then sit an exam and uh, i went through the architectural practice academy which was under the department of public works this is my only experience working in the government and let's just say I left early, <laughs> got registered, and we started our practice. And Rachel and I did a bit of tutoring. Then eventually we got to the point where we had the big mining jobs and Rachel came on full time. And that's when she said, well, if you can have me full time, you can have kids. So that was where we went from there. And so we played a lot in the commercial and industrial field. And one thing we realized, architects pay was always pretty average, pretty average. We were getting paid well for students because there was a boom on and QT students could you could draft, you can take on responsibility and you know there was demand for you here in Brisbane. And then when we started our own business, it is a, we realized how competitive it is in the sector. Particularly we did a lot of the resource sector work, which we kind of lucked into, to be honest. Um, Rachel had a relationship there and that led to the mining work and that was good for us. And then when I took those fees, I was charging in mining, into uh, other sectors i was kind of a bit shocked i was i was um really shocked at just how competitive some of these other sectors were multi-res the expectation of you doing free work to win a job you know doing a free concept design i had one project where we did a concept design for a builder to win a job i put my fee in then they came back saying oh no you need to cut your fee 30 percent and here's the thing, I own that concept design as my copyright. I'd given it to them to help them win the project. Then they still came and kicked me. But the problem was I had staff. I had to take the work. I needed to keep the guys going. I couldn't risk losing the job. That's the, the challenge when you're a small business and you know you, you don't, well, you're depending on the work coming in to keep the machine running. That's one thing I learned was, uh, particularly when we'd have clients that would give us huge, you know, end up being 80% of our income. For some of these this sectors and that terrified me and i did everything i could to get more you know variety in but that's just how it is it's a challenge so let's have let's go through this article now that you can see where where my perspective is is from is from so 
the slump in residential construction activity and consumer confidence about buying off the plan has weakened pay conditions in the property industry, with archi architects the first to feel the pain, according to the latest of DV property remuneration report. Too many architects and graduates and too few projects, said a DV group founder, Rita A, I'm gonna say, who trained as an architect, oh, there you go. My advice is to get out of the industry unless you have a real passion to be an architect. While talented young professionals can still secure above inflation pay increases, some as high as 15%, design and building consultants, the leading indicators for the property market due to their early appointment to projects, reported a downturn in business conditions, the report found. So that's kind of like the PMI I wanted to start for the architectural sector. Architects are the lowest paid profession in the real estate business, she said. Yes, yep, and honestly, we are, frankly, professionals. So that means that we have, one thing that they may not mention here is we have a level of responsibility that is handed down to us and put upon us from the Architects Act. Interior designers, they don't. They are not covered by, they don't have an act or legislation. Lawyers do, accountants do, oh no, sorry, not accountants, doctors do, if there's an act or an oath that you have to take that gives additional responsibilities to you. An interior designer can specify all the furniture in a job and receive a commission on that furniture from the person they specify from. They don't even have to tell you about it. It's not ethical, but they should. But a architect, no, we can't do that. That would be seen as taking a backhander. The act would come down on us. And I know that because there were interior design lecturers teaching that to architecture students at QUT and Rachel raised a huff about it saying we shouldn't be mixing non-professionals with professionals and she was never asked back to tutor again. So her report labelled the architecture sector as a highly competitive market due to severe cost cutting by rivals, scope creep where architects are forced to take on more work without extra pay and late payments by clients. Yes. Yes, severe cost cutting, that is just insane, the fees that you charge. I'd, I had a small practice, I think 12 people at one stage, that was the biggest we were. And I would struggle to compete with fees with some of the bigger boys. I'd just struggle. My fees would be more expensive. People would be doing it for nothing. Scope creep, yep, yeah. I, I literally was on the phone today about that potentially occurring on a job, so I have to get back, because the problem is, if with scope creep, if you can say, no, I'm not doing that, you need to pay me more, you then get a reputation as being difficult to work with and they'll go to other people that will just accept it because it's cost cutting. And I mean, you have to understand, people have to do it sometimes just to keep the machine running. I would go out there, network, coffees, meet people to win work. I remember I was so happy that I won a kitchen and bathroom for a mine because that meant I had enough work to keep the boys employed. And I came into the office and was all excited and they're going, oh, that's shit. Well, I don't want to work on that. I could nearly throttle them. They didn't realize how hard it was for me to actually bring that work in to keep them employed, to keep them employed. I, I was tempted to fire them on the spot. That, that, that type of thing, when that happens to you as a business owner, that hardens you. That hardens you really, really quick. So that's why when all these people are complaining about how it's unfair for bosses and how they get all these perks, they've got no idea. They literally have no idea. And yeah, you know, if, if they were good, do it themselves. That's one criticism I have for the unions. If anyone in the union movement was good enough to run a business, they wouldn't be in the union movement, would they? They'd be running a business. So she said one respondent to the survey, an architectural firm, reported and in the space of six months, it had to halve fees to win projects. Yep, I am not surprised by that in the slightest. Exacerbated by the building defects and cladding crisis, she said the slump affecting architects was expected to flow onto other sectors over time. Overall, property market sentiment weakened since the last survey in October 2018, with almost double the proportion, 27% versus 14% of respondents saying they were worse off than 12 months ago. Only 10% said they were doing better compared with 36% in October 2018. So they've done a PMI, 
Well, there you go. Learning something new every day. Well. So, and here we have the different different uh, national average pays. Retirement village manager. Real estate agency advisor, 88 grand. There you go. So someone working in aged care, yeah. Yep. And remember, architects, two degrees, and then postgraduate study, and then a postgraduate exam, and then yearly CPI, <laughs> and then insurance. So the contraction in residential construction activity was highlighted in the minutes of the Reserve Bank October 1 monetary policy meeting published on Tuesday. It noted this contraction was expected to continue for some time, with high density, appro density approvals falling in July to their lowest level in seven years. Detached approvals also falling, and non-residential construction outside the mining sector also declining. Claire Cousins, immediate past president of the Australian Institute of Architects, said firms getting work from booming sectors like infrastructure and education were doing better than those focused on the big multi-residential projects where the market has softened and consumer confidence has weakened in the wake of the cladding and defects crisis. Well, yes, you'll find firms that are working in infrastructure. Like when we were in the mining, we were a lot better, doing a lot better and busier than other practices. And I also know firms that are doing a lot of education work, but that education, I put a fee in, what was it? There, I was invited to submit a tender for an education project a couple of months ago. And uh, I, I spoke to one of my engineers because, you know, as the architect, I had to take all the engineers underneath me, structural, civil, electrical, the whole whole team, because it was the government. They wanted me to take them on. So I had to take responsibility for all of them. And their fees probably be half a million, quarter million to half a million, depending on the scale of the project. I can't remember, and I'm not looking it up. But essentially, I would have to take on all their responsibility, manage all of them, and the project manager in my tender submission wanted me to write out all these plans and strategies and you know risk management plans, which frankly is their bloody job to do prior to, and, but they're pushing it all onto me. I'd worked with this PM before, so I'm not surprised. And my revenue that I'd be able to charge for that would be $100,000. Now you think that may sound good, but I'd probably need one person full-time on that job for four months to work on it so it's not worth it when you look at the risk reward ratio this is after i'd started looking at investing and and uh, share trading and 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 trying to start to come to grips with that and i'm learning all about risk reward and investing and i'm thinking wait a minute what if i apply those same things to my projects and i go oh shit yeah i'm taking on hundreds of thousands of dollars of risk and liability and it doesn't just disappear you're you're responsible for their work for six years so if the engineer stuffs up i am responsible they sue me to get to them i take on all of their liability as well and you can't just say oh no i'm not doing that the gut then you you don't get the opportunity the project managers say they either they know exactly what they're doing or they don't appreciate what they're doing so that's the thing that's the thing and you need to weigh that up you need to weigh that up for what you can earn on it. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. So some of these large practices focused on residential can have 80 staff, she said. She also pointed the finger at more long running and now entrenched trend, the emergence of design and construction procurement contracts where architects essentially work for builders rather than their clients for crunching fees. So I'm going to link to a video I did. I'll put that in here which is about Opal Tower, Mascot Tower, and just the issues of design and construct, and how that means as the policeman, see, as the architect normally, you're working for the client, and you go out and inspect the site, you have some authority there over that to, an, to ensure quality. When you're working under the builder, you have to talk to the builder, any issues. So if the builder stuffs up or cuts a corner, you can't go back to the client because you're not contracted to them anymore. You can get fired for doing that. You need to go through the builder. And what do you think happens when you do that? Well, you can lose clients if the builders are your clients. So it's fairly common for late payments to architects from the head building contractor. See, she said, oh yeah, well, I mean, that's just it. That's the problem. That, that's the thing. You can have like 100 grand outstanding for a small firm and need to keep the work coming in 
So then you're in the compromised position where you need to take the work on because you've given credit to someone else. I was talking to a medical friend about, oh, God, why don't you just change them up, charge them up front? And I go, well, then you never win any work. That's the problem. You have to come to where the market is. And yeah, the thing is also the Productivity Commission removed the fee scale. They didn't, they're didn't. not allowing architects to use the fee scale from the Institute of Architects because it's anti-competitive. But now, yeah. So Rodney uh, Pearsley, Managing Director at architecture and design firm Scott Carver, said the market was always tough and in a volatile state as big projects came and went. It's a competitive industry. There are a lot of international firms in the market, so it's an enormous talent pool, he said. He said his firm was not hiring any new staff at the moment. Well, yes, I remember I was talking to a, a director at a large firm here in Brisbane that hadn't hired anyone for five years. You know, this is a, probably a year or two ago, and I'm sure it's changed. So, guys, I'm not surprised in the slightest. I mean, it's part of why we have cut the cost of our business back. It's part of why I've, I've, we've gotten rid of our premises. I moved here now. I'm working from the studio back home, and we've looked at ways to adapt and cut our costs. I mean, just moving out of our retail space in internet and electricity, getting rid of that, save me, not even rent, just save me a thousand bucks a month, cutting that off from working here. So it just shows you how expensive it is to run a uh, practice. And then when you have to cut, you know, like these guys cut their fees by half to win projects. Yeah, that's, that's when it gets frustrating uh, because architecture is very labor intensive doing the work particularly when you're doing the construction documentation you can spend hundreds of hours thousands of hours working to prepare a good set of documents and one thing we would try to do was to, would be to prepare a really nice schmick set of documents particularly in all the the um hang on the mining jobs what do we got here I'm just going through oh there's a little bathroom okay I'll jump back. Well, these were these are all out of order, to be honest. When we've done them, uh, so like you know, on the the big mining buildings and the mining jobs, they were our first big commercial projects. So what we did is we we really worked up the documents. We wanted to produce a high level of documentation, try and get the issues, in the hopes that that would lead to more work. And it kind of did, but otherwise, it's not really appreciated. And then the problem is if you fall into that trap of a certain level of quality, like we'd check everything three times before it would go out, we'd review it, we'd have all these systems in place, that'll cost a lot of money. And then you're competing with someone else who just squeezes it out at a lower cost. So guys, I'm not surprised uh, that, you know, architecture is not a way to make money. Not in the slightest at all. There's much easier ways to make money. Uh, there's much professions that are much smarter at handling risk. I mean, the Institute of Architects, Rachel and I were involved there significantly for a while. We, we helped revamp, revamp the entire postgraduate course that they taught here in Brisbane. And uh, we were on the practice committee. And what frustrated me was that they seemed to be more focus, focused on design and pretty things rather than the meat and potatoes of the profession that we were getting our you know, we were having increased competition from project managers that, uh, you know, it, it just at the last alumni event, a, a well-known architect here in Brisbane was complaining to an academic about the same rubbish that they've been complaining about for 10 years. Oh, they're not ready for practice and all this stuff. When as a profession, we're just getting our scope and responsibility shrunk down, our fees shrunk. And frankly, I think we're starting to see some of that coming through in the quality of construction, you know, because not only in these design and constructs, often the certifier is working for the builder as well. So guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy this content, please share the video around. If you'd like to help me produce more, I have a subscribe star and a Patreon. And I know this is probably a bit of a rambly one, <laughs> this one, but you can understand how I have a fair bit of experience and not just as an employee, as a director managing people. I mean, one thing that's really frustrating is when you hire someone, we learned really quick, you hire and fire within a week. You've got to get rid of them within a week. Someone was making a comment about, because I said I've hired people from all over the world and I thought about it, I've hired what Africa, 
from Pacific Island, from Eastern Europe, from Southern Europe, <laughs> from Israel. The only continent I haven't got someone from is America. I had some Kiwis, some Pommies, Germans. I had a, you know, architects, a very international profession. You're always going to mix of people coming through and, you know, you get lazy, lazy people in all cultures, guys, because it's a tough game. We'd often have to work all through the night. Anyway, guys, if you like this type of stuff, let me know. If you're an architect, how have you found, how are your fees going, guys? You know, have, they, have you had to cut your fees? Really? Um, if you found it tough, or are you doing really well and kicking goals and making a fortune? Let me know. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.